Welcome back to another episode of Let's Chat Podcast, y'all. I am your host, Jojo. And I'm Dyra. Ooh. Ooh. You ever get tired of hearing me say that? Ooh. No. I feel oh. like that's what it, it makes the podcast. Ooh. I really don't even know where that came from. You Literally, it came out of nowhere. <laughs> but I've done it since the first one. Mm-hmm. See or no? I mm-hmm. don't even remember. Every time I go back and look at our like older videos, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God. I'm skeeved and uh-huh. like in awe at the same time because right. I'm just like, oh my God, look how skinny I look. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. I'll be looking think- at myself like, and then I look at some of the other ones where I was like, damn, I was looking busted. Dusty, busty. No, what don't. am I doing? I don't always come on here looking as presentable, but you know, it is what it is. I always think you look cute. Thank you. Yeah. We don't all have patience like you to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> you're faithful to the shit. If anything, you've been nothing but consistent. Of Me, course. This I is, come in how I come in. Well, this is a... Uh, I feel like this is like an event. Like, this is the thing to get ready for. Oh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm just not up to par. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, you don't need to get ready. Like, you just stay ready. Period. <laughs> you should have seen her because she was trying to put on a hat. Most times yeah. when my hair is up, it's because I did it, like it's a process to do my hair. I don't um, think I've ever put my hair in a bun in the podcast. No, you have never. And that's all about never. To say. I put my hair up in a bun when it's dirty or like I just don't have the patience to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's dirty as fuck right now, so I'm pretty surprised it's it don't down. Look dirty. It looks. I don't like the way it looks. It looks good. But thank you. Um, but she wanted to. She was like, her hair is too. She didn't feel like doing it, and I'm just like, okay, so put on a hat. She was like, I won't put on a hat. <laughs> I give her options and she's not fucking with it. And she's just like, I w- it's hiding my listen, face. Listen, like <laughs> I wish I like I wear regular hats. So I told her I was like, give me one of your hats. She has like the trucker hats. It just my like I have a big head, but for some reason it still makes my head look like small. And then the hat looks humongous. Like it, it just wasn't given to me. Then I tried a bucket hat, and I usually like bucket hats, but it was like hiding my eyebrows, and I'm like. I, th- I did my <laughs> eyebrows for a reason. Where's the rest of my face? I said, I'm just going to put it in a bun and call it a day. Yeah. I'm getting hot. Have you put it in a bun? I don't know. Never. You usually I mean, I'm, I'm like braided it or put it in a ponytail, but not a bun. Why didn't you do that? I don't think I just long. literally did not feel like doing it. Uh-huh. It'd be like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, a couple things that I wanted to start off with. So, this is an LGBTQ podcast. And. You got a little cookie crumb. You got it up? Yeah. And obviously, like, you know, we try to stay up to date with the news and things like that, but we don't talk about it in the podcast too much just because, one, we pre-record, so sometimes we're just, like, not up to date with things, and two... We just always try to keep things light in this podcast, and we've said it before, like, we're not super political and all of that, Um, and we, like, we usually do talk about it, like, on Instagram and things like that, but we couldn't ignore, obviously, the shooting that happened um, in Tennessee, Nashville, um, where someone went into school and unfortunately killed children and adults, so... You know, rest in peace to to those people and rest in peace to, I mean, this is always happening. So, like, this isn't obviously the first time that it's happening. And it's just heartbreaking because it shouldn't happen. Like, kids shouldn't go to school and, and, you know, have to deal with this shit. Like, I really give props to teachers. And if you guys saw our last episode with teacher um, Roby. They give a lot of insight of what it's like to be a teacher, but it's a lot of work. And like, not only is it a lot of work to be a teacher, but then you also have to deal with a possible shooting. Yeah. So teachers are just as much essential workers as first responders. Truly. And they deserve to get paid more. Um, But I wanted to talk about it briefly. um, And I wanted to talk about like this article that I saw and I'm going to read a little bit of it. But basically it says Nashville police announced that the shooter who killed three children and three adults at a school this week was transgender. Republicans, a U.S. US senator from Ohio and a U.S. representative, Taylor Green, suggested in social media posts that the shooter's gender identity may have been a factor in the murders. They always got to tie it into LGBTQ stuff. Like, this is this is always happening. But 
never has it really been a transgender person. So for them to try to tie it back to that, I think it just has to do with all the laws that they're bringing in when it comes to like drag queens and drag shows and all this shit. Like I feel like they're like the world literally focuses on the wrong things. They want to focus on basically going back in time, but not on progressing and, you know, taking care of the world and the environment. Like, all they care about is LGBTQ stuff. Like, literally, that's, like, their main focus right now. And it's crazy because I feel like, why? I feel like we did so much progress over the past couple of years, and now it seems like we're going backwards. And then when things like this happen and... You know, it's a transgender person. Of course, they want to tie it in with the whole LGBTQ community. So one person did it, and now it's all of our fault. Like, it's all the community's fault. So I have a problem with that. But don't talk about the people who go into LGBTQ plus establishments and go shooting them up. Right. (laughs) Not my business. (laughs) Um, So there was this post that I saw on Instagram, and I'm going to give credit to, obviously, the Instagram page. They are called Teaching is Intellectual. And basically, they put the number of child deaths versus the number of fails, bills. <laughs> so drag shows, zero child deaths, 14 anti-drag bills. Don't say gays, zero child deaths, deaths, 22 states proposing legislation. Book bans, zero child death, deaths, I can't talk. <laughs> 32 states have banned over 2,500 books. And then it says guns, nearly 4,000 children last year, 34 states are weakening gun regulation, regulations. Um, and then they wrote, protect kids by keeping them alive. Drag shows do not kill children. Saying gay does not kill children. In fact, kids who grow up with representation of diverse ways of being are less likely to experience the depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts, and tragically common amongst queer kids. Bales are targeting gay and trans kids, does not put them at a greater risk of harm, and makes them less safe, but saying gay does not. And then they, you know, go on and say other things, but I really agree with all of this, and I feel like Nothing that has been like an LGBTQ thing has ever harmed a child, not that I've seen on the news, like with the drag shows and what the drag shows that don't say gay, the book bans, like teachers literally in Florida and Texas and things like that who are gay truly cannot speak about anything related to their family. And that's also like, a, oh, just like you're going back into the closet, like we've said before. And when it comes to the guns thing, like my my um i guess my opinion on it is that i don't have a problem with it but i do feel like they just give it to the wrong people or like it's just too easy to access you know like i feel like in these states like what nashville or or whatever like it it sounds like people who are are like you know crazy like this literally going to a store and just buy it like candy like i feel like there's no there's no steps to it like i feel like oh you you want to go okay cool let's how much you like that's it and then and then not only that but they also give them like the big ones Mm -hmm. i know nothing about guns i don't know no names no nothing but i just know that they be getting the big boys like the ones that they used to go hunt deer and shit shotguns and my thing is why do you need that why do you need such a big thing? Like, I feel like if it's for protection, wouldn't you just get a regular one? You really need, like, the biggest one. I don't know. Like, I feel like we should start worrying about things like that and less about the drag shows. <laughs> Simple. Anyways, in lighter news, I well, not lighter because I don't think it's lighter, but I think it's just, like, why? The L word is canceled, apparently. Canceled in a sense of like that. That's it. The show's over. Are we surprised? No, <laughs> I just don't. I don't get it. Okay, we're canceling it. Sure, last season was ass, but what? What's the spinoff? It said something about making um what a reboot, but mm-hmm. I don't know what that implies because I thought that this one, not that this generation Q was just like a reboot, but more like a spinoff or like more so Mm -hmm. in relation to the generation now Mm -hmm. while also still having the three originals from it but i'm scared to see what they mean by a reboot 
However, I did see a reel of, if you know the real L word um, cast, which are, is from the reality TV show of the L word. Mm-hmm. Um, I seen a reel that my best friend sent to me with all those original cast members together. Mm-hmm. So I wonder what they're coming up with. Hopefully something Wait, good. From, from the, the, like the reality show? Yeah. Oh. I showed you that this morning. That, I didn't know that's what it was really. Yes. So. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just give me another show with Bet and we're okay. I don't really, What is your obsession with Bet? You're don't. so obsessed. But do you know that, like, you're kind of a reflection of her? So do you like yourself? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying she's still, the, she's like the only one that still looks good, really. <laughs> she didn't look up she, her. She did not crack. Uh uh-uh. uh. Anyway, so. Today's topic we want to get into is fighting languages, fighting styles, I guess, so to say. So I think we did, we actually have done a couple. We talked about love languages, but I think we did that like minimally. Like we didn't do an entire episode. Mm -hmm. I think we just did that. Like the conversation came up Mm -hmm. within conversation of other stuff. Um, But we've touched on that a little bit. And then we talked about attachment styles. Um, which were just ways, I guess, you attach or are disattached from partners and people and things in your life. Mm-hmm. So it was only a matter of time till we came up with this. <laughs> and let me tell you, we be fighting all the time. No, I'm kidding. I'm talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at you like, what? So I, I just think it's kind of cool because every... every little bit, I feel like I'm learning something as well as like trying to like... Mm-hmm. share with you guys what i've learned right. um and i think it's all beginning to make sense mm-hmm. and i don't know if that's just this generation trying to make sense out of everything or like trying to come up with some form of explanation of why we do so many things mm-hmm. um or if like this has really always been a thing and past generations really just didn't care enough to know yeah or we're just like hidden from the like mm-hmm. you know reality of things yeah so it's cool to know all right so i feel like when it comes to a relationship we mainly focus on like the ways of keeping the relationship exciting and in that happy state where you're just like how can i make you happy how can i show you that i care and under you know and i'm willing to understand you how can i just continue to provide a healthy space for us Mm -hmm. in a sense where you're always in this happy state of mind Mm -hmm. And while, you know, we want to learn our partner's love languages so that, you know, they know we care, we understand, or like, even though we don't understand, we still want to be able to love you in the way that you want to be loved. I think it's no secret or really, we just don't really think about fighting languages and fighting styles and like why you are that way. I think when we... Or in that fighting state, we're just immediately like either trying to solve it or in a defense mode where yeah. we're just like, nah, you not finna come for me. Like I'm not like that. Uh-huh. Um so you did your quiz, right? Yeah, I did. So I did two quizzes though. Oh, you did? I was trying, yeah, because the one that I uh-huh. originally showed you. Um, so I did look it up and it was like a little difficult because there's so many um, like websites, I was like, oh, I'll do a quiz here and stuff. Right. So I did one and then she sent me another one. Um, mm-hmm. I guess that was a Jay Shetty quiz. Yeah. Excuse me, which is originally where I heard this from. You know, I watch everything on TikTok. Right. And it was basically talk he was talking about love languages and how him right. and like his wife had their differences. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh wow, like that's pretty cool. Like, I really never thought of that. So I did both. Mm-hmm. She did one. And honestly, the Jay Shetty one that I did, I was like, I don't know that I fully. <laughs> yeah, same. But I don't, I think that, I don't know. Like, I feel like we're like a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, but side note, nothing about fight, fight languages and stuff like that. But you mentioned like the love languages thing. Mm -hmm. One of our listeners emailed me once and basically said that Gary Chapman is actually super homophobic. The person who came up with love languages. Not surprised. So not that I don't believe in them anymore, but I don't support the person 
who created it anymore. So I'm done with him. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I could Google Google it because I was shocked. I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, with the fight styles, um, I did a quiz by Jay Shetty. Anyone could do it online. We could also include a link. And I have like some, I have the book on my phone and I highlighted some parts that I wanted to talk about because I feel like, I think fight languages also relate to how we grew up. Mm -hmm. A lot of it has to do with like what you saw in your household, how you saw your parents argue, your siblings and things like that. So all of which the same way you learn how to love right. and be affectionate and all those things, mm -hmm. you learn that from majority of the time, your home background. Right. And you think that that's the norm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, like a work in progress, honestly. So if we say things that you were like, damn, like I'm like that and I probably shouldn't be like that. It's fine. Like I feel like mm -hmm. you learn and grow as you get older. But the three that Jay Shetty identified were... Number one is the venting one, like the venter who wants to solve it right now. The other one he mentioned is hyping or hiding. Basically, some people like just shut down and don't want to talk about it. They need some time. They need some hours or maybe they need some days to talk about it. And then the third one is exploding. So it's like people who... Self-explanatory. Right, people who can't control their anger and they're like so abrupt with their like emotions. Um, and like, I think that one is like truly the worst one, but no big deal. We're gonna talk <laughs> about how I guess you can um, learn more about it and kind of just be like a better, be better in your fighting styles, I guess you can say. So, in the Jay Shetty one, I apparently got the venter, like, I like to vent. <laughs> <laughs> apparently it says you are a venter some people like me want to express their anger and keep hashing it out until solution is reached this type of fighter is a solution oriented and wants to get to an answer and is often often overly focused on facts it's natural to want to solve the problem but if this is you you need to remember to slow down and to make room not just for facts which are often up for debate but for both sides of the story and for two sets of emotions yours and your partner's watch out for unfiltered talking in your eagerness to wrap things up you might overwhelm your partner with too many ideas and approaches don't rush to an answer first you and your partner will need to agree about what you about what issue you're up against. Only the only then can you look for solutions together. I can't talk. <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> so how do you feel like that um, relates to you? Do you agree with it? Disagree with so, it? So I feel like I agree with it, but I also feel like I'm someone who like I wouldn't say I like to hide, but sometimes I just need time mm -hmm. to like really process things because I know that if I say something and during that time it's probably not gonna come out nice and then i'm gonna be mean and then i'm gonna have to apologize for being mean so i'd rather just have some time sometimes but i feel like with that i don't like to take too long like some people like to take days but i don't even like to take days sometimes because i just feel like i want to solve this by the end of the day <laughs> yeah <laughs> type of thing like i don't want this to drag right. because then it's just awkward and like there's a lot of tension and like it's just weird. Mm -hmm. you the know? mood is just off. Yeah, like it's like it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah. So I feel like I'm in between the two. But exploder, like I don't think I'm like that. Exploding, no. I mean, uh, I think there's potential. Like you could, depending on the scenario, uh -huh. most definitely. Yeah. Um, intoxicated, everyone's explosive, but that's besides the point. Mm -hmm. Um, but. I actually have the same one. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I literally had, I uh -huh. took the same quiz and I got the same answer as a venter. Uh -huh. And I don't know. I'm not going to say like I don't. Um, I guess one of the things that I do agree with is the fact that I want to solve it ASAP. Uh -huh. Like I want to, <clears throat> I think especially when, within a relationship, you don't want that sense of tension and that uncomfortable walking on eggshells feeling especially when you share a space together like i don't like that feeling mm -hmm. it's so it's just so uncomfortable and i don't want to be in my own space uncomfortable right. and like not knowing and i think sometimes when i feel like i'm in that situation to where i'm walking on eggshells i feel like damn like i should leave them alone but at the same time 
I feel like I should, you know, be some type of present and like be interactive with him in a sense, because it's like, I kind of want you to know that I'm no longer in that state of where like it's mm-hmm. bothering me. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you know that it's not like, it's not a bother to me, then maybe it'll show that it no longer has to be a bother to you. and We can mm-hmm. like settle down. Right. You know? Um, but I'm, I think I agree in that sense that I'm like quick to be like, I want to solve this shit because mm-hmm. I do not like the idea of being uncomfortable and in this mood all day. Yeah. And then something else that he said in his book is if one of if one or both of you likes to vent, the other might need more time and space to process. Just because one person isn't ready doesn't mean they don't love the other and they should reassure their partner of this. So I feel like for couples who are in a relationship and one of them is like the hider and the other one's like a venter, sometimes the venter feels like the hider just doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Like it's like they don't even you know they don't even care to solve this like they don't care about the relationship they don't care if i leave like Mm -hmm. they're walking away from me blah blah blah. and that's really not the case like i feel like i've been i've been a hider before and it's really like i really just need space like i truly need to breathe right now before i get an anxiety attack like just literally give me some time because then i'm gonna explode and then it's gonna be an explosive type of (laughs) argument (laughs) and we really don't need that and like I don't know. I've I've had I mean, I've dated a lot of people and I feel like I've dated people who have that explosive type of um fight style and it's just like it's like a movie. Mm-hmm. It's like so toxic, so just, theatrical. Yeah, like <laughs> the whole the whole like literally raising raising your voice and like being dramatic and crying and like For things that really didn't need to have all that. Like, it's like, this could have really been solved if we would just sit down and talk about it. And I feel like it's really not what you say, it's how you say it. Like, literally 90% of it is, like, the way that you say things. And then the other 10%. Your tone, your mannerism. Yeah, like, your tone. And the other 10% is, like, what you say. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's really, like, the biggest issue with a lot of relationships is that people like like to raise their voice people like to scream they like to slam things like now you're scaring me (laughs) (laughs) like now i'm concerned like now this is this might get physical and i don't need that type Mm -hmm. shit you know especially when it comes to lgbtq relationships and we talked about it before like sometimes we think oh we're we're both women so we could fight (laughs) And no, that's toxic. Like, yeah. don't do that I, ever, you know? Yeah. So the other quiz that I took is actually from lenamorgan.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess that that's like another um, book or something that talks about fight languages. And the results I got from that was that it says you are 44% fixer, the mechanic. The mechanic wants to fix the disruption and make things seem calm again. It says the productive trait that can act as a mediator for discussions and find common ground. A protective trait. It says might try explaining your feelings to you or end up brushing them aside. Oh, wait, I read that wrong. Might try explaining your feelings to you Mm -hmm. or end up brushing them aside. And then it just gives a percentage of like other potential traits Mm -hmm. so it says you're also a zero percent aggressor oh wow (laughs) right 11 percent evasive and then they got like little like side names for these so like the aggressor is the general the evasive is the magician 11 percent righteous which is the attorney 11 percent victim the thespian thespian i don't know oh wow she got crazy with her 22 percent withdrawal the astronaut i don't know it was just it was one i found prior Uh to the one that you sent me and i was like whatever i'm just gonna do it and see what it says yeah so i do agree with the sense that again i'm in that fixing mode where i just want things to be cool calm and copacetic i don't want that tension and that uneasiness because that shit is super uncomfortable and it's just like you never know if this person is really like over it or upset like but you think you're zero zero percent aggressor you i knew you were gonna say that shit um no i do think that i have a a certain sense of aggression in me 
obviously, um, if you see the household, I, why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> what is so I funny? I'm laughing at that quiz. Zero <laughs> percent. Shut up. Stop Continue. Talking. Anyway, mm-hmm. so I think that um, it's kind of crazy when you think about like. What, how you are now mm-hmm. only because in my household we i do come from a house of aggression um you know my parents used to yell at each other all the time and mm-hmm. i've gotten to arguments with my brothers where we're yelling and throwing shit and fighting you know i punched my brother in the mouth a couple times uh-huh. um got beat later but it's okay yeah um but that was just a norm for me growing up in that state where it was just like uh you know, when you're in your feelings and, and something gets you, I guess that sense of anger is just automatically to react. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's kind of weird because I feel like although I was like that at home, like how I can be that person with my family, I'm not that person outside of the home. So I feel like I'm just not that person with other people. Go ahead, say some shit because you're you you look like you want to say something. <laughs> I'm blinking, like I didn't say anything. Mm, you should see the way that you're blinking. <laughs> Mannerisms. We just talked about that. I think that you should see the way that you t- you should talk to your like you talk to your friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also think that you also have to be aggressive at work. So mm-hmm. I think that sometimes you do become a little bit aggressive outside of work and outside of the home. Like, I feel like it just comes out of nowhere. Like, and it's like, like if you're talking to someone, sometimes I'm like, is she arguing or is she talking? Like, and I, I know coming from a Hispanic family, that's how a lot of us are. But my mom and like growing up, my mom and my dad, they didn't have too many arguments. Like, I feel like I did see them argue a couple of times, but my dad never raised his voice. It was really like my mom. So it was like, you're screaming at yourself because he was really just a, such a calm person. So it was like, she looked kind of foolish. Like, <laughs> you, why are you screaming? Because he's not screaming, <laughs> but whatever. So um, there, there was a little bit of aggression at home, but I feel like growing up, we still didn't carry that trait. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like now, and even now I see them, and they're they talk very low, like they're like super calm, like they never get crazy, they never get loud. So I feel like I've kind of um, got that trait from them. Like I'm not gonna get crazy. I just feel like it just I just don't need to. I do have. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I don't have that sense of aggression. Yeah, but I also am saying that I don't portray it at all times with everybody. I feel like I know who I can be Mm -hmm. that person with um, because I guess it it just is kind of just a part of my, you know, a trait that's a part of me. Mm -hmm. Um, So I know what friends I can have that sense of aggression with or Mm -hmm. like, you know, I also go to work with these people who are like that. So Mm -hmm. that is our friendship. Mm -hmm. So I think when you see that, you're like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, it's like that's our friendship. That's how we, you know, pretty much conversate. That's yeah. it's not just a me thing. It's like a us thing. Um, yeah, I will hope so. What do you mean? Because I feel like if you were that type of person with all your friends, I would be like, yeah, I can't be her friend type of thing. Oh yeah, my mom tells me that all the time. But I uh-huh. again, like it, it's to a it's to a limit too because I also think that when we talk. With my friends where we talk aggressively to each other, it's mm-hmm. usually out of, um, like, humor. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just out of, like, humor and, you know, it being a part of our personality trait because of, you know, our our environment at work. So, it's like, it's just like a, we speak in our own type of language and that's okay. We don't mm-hmm. take it personal. Um, but I also feel like I do have certain people that I know that I can, I, like, I can't be that aggressor, be that aggressor with, mm-hmm. um, where I can be a little bit more mellow and calm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I say I'm really not for everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. And I think like when me and you got together, it was kind of a thing for you. Yeah. Um, she really was not with the shits. With what though? 
because she just felt like she, okay, she could be a very dismissive person, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm already, I think in a relationship, I'm already a person who does not like to argue. I don't like to be in that space. I say that shit all the time Mm -hmm. because I don't, I don't like the idea of, I'm, I'm, I'm a people pleaser to, in a sense. So I feel like if my partner's not happy and I'm the reason why they're unhappy and now we're in this shitty you know, space, mm-hmm. um, that's why I'm like quick to want to fix it. Um, and I guess I also have a hard time like expressing myself because I feel like I'm either not, like I'm saying shit that don't make sense or my thoughts aren't properly assembling for me to say what I really want to say. Now I'm in a position to where I'm just saying shit that I feel because I'm feeling it and I'm not fucking thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's also why I try to just shut shut up and not say anything. But I think that puts me in a position to where I'm just shutting up and I'm not saying anything at all. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like low key just being a pushover, like getting pushed over type shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it seems like, oh, well, nothing's wrong. So then I think eventually it becomes a buildup for me. Yeah. But- with her, um, I forget there was something she brought up, and if there's anything that I knew about her, is like if something bothered her, she was gonna say it. Um, so she said something, and I guess I was trying to also be within the conversation and communicate, like, okay, I understand that, um, but my communication came off as that aggressor. Mm-hmm. Um, I get loud, I raise my voice. Um, and that's usually kind of out of frustration, but she was just like, yeah, no, I'm not talking to you. Like we're not about to have this conversation because you're coming crazy. And I was like, what? So you can talk and you can say what you want. And I got it. And so now I'm coming crazy. Now I'm invalid. And that shit used to bother me. Um, because it was just like. I'm not trying to be this shut up person at this time in my life. I'm trying to be more open Mm -hmm. and like communicative in terms of my feelings in bad situations like that. But I think it did make sense not for you to be dismissive, but for you to like, that just wasn't your style. Yeah. Like she's more of a mellow type person. Like don't get it fucked up. She, when she's mad, she gets, she be wilding. But if she's just bringing something up, it's, she just talks about it softly. Although she does have her sense of like, I do be telling her it's the way she say shit too. Cause she could say shit in a calm voice, but it can be very disrespectful or it could be very like <laughs> asshole shit. And she just thinks that I'm just talking. You can just talk, but it, you can, in the way that you talk, you can still put certain type of, you know, emphasis and just loads on the way that you're saying shit. Uh-huh. And I'll be telling her, I'll be like, I might be the ratchet, you know, ghetto <laughs> one, and you want to be all professional in the way that you say shit, but I know what you're saying. You're not slick. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> but we worked on that. Yeah. I think after a while, it was just like she said what she said. You know, you just a loud person. I also had to tell her, um, you know, I just come from that home background where we're all loud. Like she, she comes around my family and she was like, "Oh wow, you guys are all loud." And I'm like, "Yes, girl." But like, okay, it's not even about loud. It's like y'all really be we, arguing. We talk with aggression. Yes. Yeah, no, but like, y'all really. I'm like, like y'all about to fight. Like, what's going on? Conversations get heated. You know. It just, it just, it's, it's all the excitement and the. It, it, see, we, see, see. The difference between your family and my family is that they not arguing. They gonna hate you. Like they're not arguing. They will punch you in your face. But y'all be arguing. Like I'd be like, oh, they don't give a fuck who's here. No, I think with with my like immediate family, we don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Like me and my parents or my brothers. Yeah, we don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. But I also think like we're at an older time where we don't. If we were to get mad enough, we would, but I don't, we haven't physically fought in years. So, mm-hmm. and the one time I punched my older brother, I literally sprained my my wrist <laughs> and I punched oh. his arm. He was a, <laughs> he was a big motherfucker. Yeah. So I played myself. Um, but yeah, we be learning each other's shit. How do you think we are now? How do you think we transition? Um, I feel like, like when we would just like, all right, like, let's say I had, I brought something up. I would bring it up, and then I would feel like, oh, she's she's coming crazy. I felt like you would 
you would start as a venter and then you would like gradually increase to like explosive and then that's when i would be like okay i'm done venting and I, now i don't even want to talk about it because now i feel like it's it's becoming like like a fight and i don't want it to be a fight i want it to be kind of like a discussion mm-hmm. and like something we talk about like i don't want it to be like mm-hmm. us screaming at each other you know mm-hmm. um so i feel like Another reason why I would shut down is because I would think about past relationships and I just was just like, I'm not, I just didn't even want to go back into that. Cause like, why, you know, mm-hmm. like it was like getting, getting like deja vu. I, I do think past relations mm-hmm. obviously has that, has its own version of tying into it because mm-hmm. in my previous relationship, that person was very aggressive and was very like, you know, hand throwing, like God bless. physical in a sense uh-huh. of like, you know, hitting shit and being mm-hmm. loud, cursing, like a hundred and ten percent aggressive mm-hmm. when they were deep in their emotions or felt some type of way. Yeah. Um, so I think that I also low key came a little bit with that baggage because in that relationship I wasn't that vocal. I wasn't mm-hmm reacting and with this matching the same energy as that person so Um, what were you just just like shutting down yeah i would just i would just shut up to an extent like not i think at some point i would say something Mm -hmm. and like towards the end i'd be like you know what i'm tired of letting you disrespect me talking to me any kind of way and then i can sit here and you know let it go and and get back to the space yeah and again me being the person that i am because i want to be back in our happy space right i just let the shit go and be like whatever they were mad cool mm-hmm. cool but then i feel like when i would open my mouth i would be the one dealing with all the consequences of it yeah and it would always get thrown back in my face about what i said and and it was just like well did you not hear all the fucked up shit that you said right so I think like eventually I shut down because I I, I wasn't much of that person. Mm-hmm. And then I think over the years I was like, fuck it. Like, I don't want to be that shut up person anymore. Right. So then I think I took that action and mm-hmm. started to like act that way, I guess. Right. And then I thought, well, this is how, if this is how motherfuckers going to be in a relationship, then I guess I, I'm just going to have to, you know, Do come, I- you know, come back in that way give that no, same no, energy no. so i think that when we finally got to that and then i realized like you're not trying to be on that type wave i i think i did feel some type of way because i was like damn it's kind of making me look like i'm the only crazy one here like the fuck that's what i'm saying like i feel like when like as a child when i would say my parents argue my mom was like literally going crazy getting red and my dad would be like sitting there looking at her like trying to be as calm as possible so he wouldn't match her energy it was like she looked crazy and it's like if you if we were to have let's say we were to have cameras around you it's like you got to think about that i don't know like it's like sometimes you just literally have to chill like sometimes you really have to like take a deep breath and think about what you're gonna say instead of just like saying just what, whatever com- whatever comes yeah. out your mouth Type thing. Well, I was never the person to just let shit come out my mouth unless uh-huh. you're coming crazy. Then I'm right. like, you know what? I want you to see how it feels because I'm tired of sitting here and biting my tongue and you let, saying whatever you want. And uh-huh. then I can't say right. the same thing. Um, but damn, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but I also feel like, I don't know. I think that over time, people just like grow into this if you get what i'm saying like i used to be um i think i used to be like explosive in my first relationship because thinking back at it i would be talking and talking and venting and venting and he would just be sitting there and i would be like it makes you mad i'm like yeah yeah." now i was like now i'm getting pissed because now i feel like i'm talking to a wall Mm -hmm. and then i'm like you really don't care and then are you in la la land like i've snapped my fingers like a bitch (laughs) I'm like, are you here? Because I feel like you're like dazing off. Mm-hmm. So I was literally talking to myself. Yeah. <laughs> and that like, can be annoying. That though. doesn't solve anything either, you know? It don't. Well, you didn't you didn't answer the question is how do you think that like we transition and evolve? Like how do, how? Yeah. Like, do you feel like it has changed? Or yeah. Do you feel like we're in the same state? Like, speak up. <laughs> the hell? I'm like 
<laughs> what you trying to say? No, I think it. No, I definitely think it's changed, and I think I think it's evolved. Like cool, I feel cool. like before, I just always thought that you were gonna come crazy, but I feel like no. It's no, really it's, crazy that you have that idea of me. I, why? I think that just comes from your past situations, and you've seen certain things that may have like been close to what you experienced, and then mm-hmm. realize like, all right, she's really not that person. Not saying I can't be as like that type of person or that aggressor or whatever Mm -hmm. but i also think like with me wanting to be in this relationship obviously i was trying to be not trying to be i have this version of me that i know i wanted in a relationship and i think that that's what i was giving you and even though it took breaking some barriers down for me to get there Mm -hmm. i knew like all right Mm -hmm. you know have the highest my highest self Mm -hmm. whatever (laughs) anyway I'm just chatting, I guess. What other research did you have? So I have some other, I have like, let me see. There's like six uh, fighting language types that I looked up off of six? some website. Yeah. Okay. Um, It says your tango. Whatever. Uh, well, I'll just give you the quick mm-hmm. of what they are. So one is the quiet reflecting and act, right? You're obviously quiet. You're just taking in all of the shit that's happening. And you're kind of in that analyzed state where now you're reflecting about what happens and just mm-hmm. trying to figure out how you feel about it. If it's worth you even speaking about it and getting into right. it. And then comes the action, you know? Do you want to react to it poorly? Do you want to react to it in a more positive way where you're just conversating about it? You know, mm-hmm. just all that good stuff. Uh, number two is deflection. So you pretty much don't address it. You kind of let it just linger around and then you get into like other unrelated topics, kind of just like getting away from it. Like, oh, okay. Like I heard what you said, but I'm not trying to get into it right now type shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just refuse to hear and accept anything that the other person is saying. You become quite aggressive when a different perspective is put across them. Mm -hmm. They even have a hard time accepting their flaws. I don't know what that means. So number three is suppression then Mm overexpression. So some of the things that the article said was that people who suppress and hide their emotions and then blow up all at once, uh, bottling up your feelings and then having a breakdown, acting like your feelings don't matter and like that they're okay. Uh, blowing up when they reach a point of where they can't take anymore. And then people return to their nothing has happened behavior. So basically you just hiding your emotions. You're hiding your emotions. And every time, you know, you stay shut, you don't say nothing. You don't deal with your shit. It's just like that bottle up. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it all finally gets to a point where you're just ready to explode. And when you explode, everything comes out. It's not just about the one situation that has right. happened. It's about everything you know it just becomes about everything that you never said or or took care of before Mm -hmm. um and then you pretty much go back to that state to where everything's just regular regular yeah i i feel like i can be that person sometimes uh number four is dominating so it's pretty much just being like you know the top person in the situation where you dictate how it goes the way that it's going if the person's uh perspective or like feelings and shit even matter you know kind of like that wrong state of saying mm-hmm. like yeah bitch you're not right mm-hmm. not valid mm-hmm. um it says this fighting language is usually seen in people who have an emotional and fragile nature they adapt to this fight mechanism to protect themselves they will listen to all the arguments and thoughts of other of the other person, but will never acknowledge them. And this listening is merely an act whose main intention is to establish that what the other person is thinking is wrong. <laughs> Tragic. <laughs> Number five is me- medi. Oh, I really can't say this. Mediating. 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 Mm -hmm. Wow, that was so hard. (laughs) Don't ask me why I could not get that. Uh, Mediating, right? It says that these people have one single goal when it comes to fights. Finding a middle ground and... um, What? Finding a middle ground between the two parties and settling the issue. They genuinely listen to other person's arguments and then they try to understand their perspective and then share their point of view. They are pros at keeping and even tone and temper while resolving a conflict. And the last one is free communication. 
just saying that both parties communicate and they say what they have to say while equally being respectful and listening to what one another has to say. Um, it says that, and obviously they, they try to come to a resolution. It says for free communication to work smoothly, it is extremely necessary that each party involved maintains a clear mind along with an even tone. So those are the six examples from your tangle.com that we had researched and looked up. And then I also had found anger languages. Oh my God. There's mm-hmm. so many. So for the five anger languages, there's righteous indignation, retribution, distraction, and justification. I don't know what some of those words mean. You know, I really didn't get this one that much, but I'm just going to, I guess, relay what I found uh-huh. and that that was righteousness is the I'm right, you're wrong. Okay. Um, You know, mental mindset. Uh-huh. And then indignation. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> it is like a how could you like that sense of, you know, victim. I didn't deserve what you did type uh-huh. uh, state. Uh, retribution is like you'll pay for that. Like your time is coming. Don't oh, worry. Damn. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Uh, and then the distraction, which is like, look, you know, look over there, you know, kind of just an attempt to avoid taking responsibility. That's mm. what it says. Interesting. Yeah. It says it's the adult version of getting caught with one's hand in the cookie jar and then getting mad about never being trusted. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one was justification, which was like, that one says, like, you had to come into. Yeah. It says this is a, the art of holding others responsible for our emotions. So those anger, anger ones, anger languages I got from uh, uh, healthjournals.com. Nice. So, yeah, that concludes, like, you know, our little chit-chat about fighting languages and anger types. I want to talk about, like, how you can become better at it and, like, how you can solve things. So... One of the things that um, Jay Shetty said in his book is basically to go by these five steps that can help you find peace. He says, place and time, expression, anger management, commitment, and evolution. I'm not going to go into all of them, but I think place and time is a very important one. Um, I feel like sometimes we choose an argument like literally during the worst time. Mm -hmm. Like it's like you're you're just getting home from work or like you're leaving to go to work or you're at work. Like Mm -hmm. I've had, I've been in relationships where they will really text me like coming crazy at work and I'm busy. And I've, we talked about this before, but it's like the whole texting thing and arguing over text is not it because you never know how they're saying it. Mm -hmm. Like, how it's coming off and like i feel like by reading it you can think that they're coming crazy you know yeah Yeah, like arguing over text message it's just not it but one of the things he said is instead of saying how can you keep um okay so instead of saying how can you keep getting in the shower first thing when you know i have to be at work earlier say hey i'm feeling frustrated about our morning routine can we pick a good time to talk it through and schedule it he says literally like schedule it um another example that he gives is how many times have we had to come back and say i didn't mean it oh wait no this is an example he was just basically saying that like when you pick like the wrong time to to pick these arguments then you guys both come off bitchy Mm -hmm. and then next thing you know you gotta be like oh i'm sorry like i didn't mean that type thing you know um what else did he say um Okay, he said, we use the expression, let's get it all out on the table. And then he says, imagine people just dumping all their baggage out onto onto a dinner table. Now that you've agreed to address the issue, take the time to set the table. Find a quiet space where you can talk. Don't have it out in the bedroom where you both sleep or at the table where you both eat together. These are places where you spend intimate time together and it's best to hold them sacred. Pick a neutral location where you can discuss things. So like outside. He said like outside or like in the living room. And he also says to try positioning yourself side by side rather than across from each other. According to scientist Art Art Markman, Um, apparently studies show that when we sit next to someone, we literally share their perspective of the world around us, which may help us to feel more empathy for them. 
And like when you're sitting across somebody, like if you're at a dinner table, it's like you guys are like literally like like debating. Like it's like mm -hmm. you're at court, like you're fighting for your life type things. And like when you're sitting next to each other, it's like it's like more I don't know, like more friendly mm -hmm. rather than sitting across each other, you know? Yeah, I would think that when you're sitting across from each other, it's giving that sense of intimidation mm -hmm. where it's like, it's already hard because you can't, not can't, but some people aren't really good with eye contact. And mm -hmm. I feel like I'm hard at keeping eye contact when I'm also trying to think about what I'm saying. Right. Then he gives another example saying, instead of asking, why don't you ever clean up after you eat? You can try, do you mind cleaning up after you eat? Or I'm not feeling great. I'm stressed about the way the house looks. Would you mind picking some stuff up? Um, he also says, don't use extreme word like always and never. Threats like, if you don't change this, I'm leaving you. Or attacking words like, this is your fault, you're wrong. Like Those are just like things that you should never say in an argument, pretty much. Yeah. And then... He ends off with, each of you should ask and answer the questions. Like, what's our issue? What do you need from me right now? And basically going into the discussion, like, calmly. And then he goes more into it. I definitely recommend getting it. Because I, I just read this part of it. Like, I haven't read anything else. Yeah. But I feel like I got a good insight of, of it. And I feel like the whole, like, going on a walk or, like, going to a park to talk about things is, is like, he. I feel like... Um, scheduling it though maybe a little like <laughs> I don't think the formality of it would work it might it, work for some people it might work for some people I just people think that like it gives that. people anxiety so like if you say mm -hmm. listen like I gotta talk to you about something yeah. after work or like I gotta talk to you yeah, about something you think about that shit all day yeah like it's like the person's gonna be anxious and they're gonna be like no tell me right now and then it's like you know so I do feel like scheduling it schedule, trying to schedule it could just just not go yeah not go how you planned it yeah i don't know i don't think every, everybody's different with everything with the way they receive things with the way they they portray things so like as you were reading that and i'm just like thinking like that's so formal like who wants to do that shit formally like i understand it it's just in how you're saying it like that's the whole point of yeah like, and I'm I, saying it in a way where it's mm -hmm. not offensive right. or some shit but I mean, he's a formal person, yeah. and it's a book, but I do think that maybe we could have came up with an example that's mm -hmm. more like... Like us. Like us. Like yeah. You more, have to do what works for you. Right. Like something that we would use in our language, mm -hmm. how we talk, things like that. But I do think that it's like a little... Like you got to be like a little bit formal. Yeah. Because mm. you have to be like nice. I think there's ways of being nice. Again, I think that just comes with knowing your partner and how they receive things. Mm -hmm. Because I also think like with, with arguments, like what you deem not a big deal and all of a sudden I think is an issue. Like, I think that's why the fighting situation is hard too, because it's just like, I didn't feel that way and now you're feeling that way or I didn't, or you didn't feel that way and I do. And then it's like, I now I have to be on your level of, th you know, trying to figure out why you feel or think that way and be. Like, yeah, you know, open and validating yeah. that. I mean, I think obviously it's something that we are still working on and it's mm -hmm. something that we're still trying to grasp. Like we've only been together for two and a half years, yeah. you know? So I feel like maybe for other couples, like they've already got it down packed. But I think for me and you, it's something that we're still working on because it's like every day is something new. Like mm -hmm. every day, like we're, we're going to have bad days and... You know, there's going to be things that, I don't know, like, I feel like sometimes things are bothering me, but I don't want to go to you because I'm just like, she's had a long day. Like, it's yeah. just not, really not the time. And then when I think about it, I'm like, it's really not a big deal. You yeah. get me? Like, it's like, I don't, I'm not even going to bring it up because I'm over it mm -hmm. type thing. Yeah. And that's why, that's why it's good to take your time. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the quote said, but, like, if something isn't going to bother you, like, in five months, then... It, Why should it bother you that much now? Right, right, right. It was something like that. Um, I'm not saying you need to let everything go. It's just uh -huh. a matter of, like, really analyzing what it is that you're feeling. Why Why did I feel like that today? Mm -hmm. Like, what made me What made me get that upset? You know, why did I let that person bother me? And most times it's just things that are, like, outside coming in. And everything's kind of just coming together and clashing that you feel like, all right. Yeah, I'm well, mad. Everything's yeah. fucking with me. Sometimes it's just work. Yeah, that can do it too. Like work could be so with. stressful and so annoying. Yeah, <laughs> but 
That is our fighting language and fighting type conversation, y'all. I hope you guys liked it, got something from it. If you guys have anything that you want to share with us that we may not have brought up or don't know, please feel free to uh, reach out to us and let us know what's up. I mm -hmm. told you we're always down and willing to learn. All right, we're going to get into this family meeting real quick, y'all. Yeah. Okay, and I think that's the one. That one? Mm -hmm. So I met this girl online. The conversation was great. Everything flowed so easily. It was like I've known her forever. But the issue isn't about if we connect it. <sighs> the issue isn't about if we connect. It's yeah. about our age. I can't see. Uh, I'm an 18-year-old femme lesbian, and she's 21. She's a bi femme. She told me that she had mixed feelings about messaging uh, what about messing with me, but still flirts with me and says things like I'm on whatever you on type shit. And to be honest, I don't care about the age gap. So my question is if our age gap is, is that big or is it that big of a deal? Ugh. Um so I the only thing that I think about an 18 year old she love a age gap no i that. so the only thing that i think about about an 18 year old dating a 21 year old is that you can't go out with them to like the bars and the clubs mm -hmm. not that that's like not that everybody everybody drinks but i do feel like in our community we tend to go into gay places to find people to like connect with and meet and things like that um so i think that that's what the 21 year old might be thinking like damn i can't even go to the bar with her mm -hmm. you know but other than that i feel like the age gap really shouldn't matter that's normal mm -hmm. 18 to 21 normal that's like yeah what, i feel like ages? you're still young mm -hmm. like 21 the only thing is that you can go out you yeah. can you know you're not really that right. much grown like you're you're still in that young mentality and that teenage mentality so i don't think 18 to 21 isn't that big of a gap yeah. like she said it's just about the environments you can really spend time in right. like if that person can go out and you can't yeah there are i don't know if there there used to be like 18 and older places mm -hmm. but i don't think there's too many now yeah but, but if she said mm -hmm. she's down with it, then she really got to be down right. with it. She said she you just got to be okay when she go out. <laughs> Yikes! Yeah, that can't now, that can't all of a sudden be the deal because it's just like you knew that she was twenty one and you know she gonna do what twenty one year olds do. Right. <laughs> all right. Hello, I'm a closeted bisexual. Whoa. Hello, I'm a closeted bisexual and really want to come out, but I'm afraid that my friends will look differently at me. Some of them maybe aren't the best ally. What should I do? If they have a problem with you being gay, then they're not your friend. Simple. I don't think... What? I feel like when we have to worry about people worrying about who we love and who we sleep with at the end of the day, it's like, for what? You're not living my life. You're not, you are not the feet in my shoes. You feel me? So mm -hmm. for us to care, it's one thing to be like, I care about you and who you're with, the type of person you're with. You know, that makes sense. But to right. the fact that it's a man, woman, you know, they, them, like who cares? Yeah. It's about how you, how you're being treated, how you're being loved. You right. know, those are the things we should, you know, be taking into consideration when it's like, oh, I just want the, the you know, the good better things for you right not who you're fucking dating right yeah i feel like honestly you coming out you'll be able to see who are your real friends mm -hmm. simple like i feel like and you're gonna make new friends along the way better you're gonna be friends better that friends could, that, that you could actually relate to right I've, I've actually heard so much within the last week about having straight friends as you know, being a person, a part of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, because I feel like most times people usually end up being the only gay friend in like the group. Not everybody yeah. has this big queer group, right. you know, friend group. Um, they actually happen to be the only queer person or whatever, a gay person. And, and then it's just like, it's hard to relate. Yeah. It's like, and I feel like sometimes straight friends minimize your issues mm -hmm. 
And I think it's because they don't understand because they're not part of the community. But mm-hmm. they're just like, what? Like, you know, like, I'm an ally. Like, I don't care who you with. Like, right. blah, blah, blah. But it's like, girl, we're we not got, having the same We got bigger though. issues. We got bigger issues. I know you're an ally, but it's like, you don't know what it's like to date someone of the same sex. Like, you don't know what it's like to have to walk down the street holding hands. Like, you really just don't know what it's like. So, it's like sometimes I feel like when you're venting or talking about these things, it kind of just goes over their head. Mm-hmm. And they don't understand. And they mm-hmm. kind of just like, I don't know, kind of minimize what you're talking about and yeah. how you feel. Mm-hmm. And make it seem like, girl, the world is like a better place. And I get it. The world is a better place. But it's still not perfect, mm-hmm. as we all know. They just want to get back to the dick talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Like, it's like, okay. Like, Moving girl, on. You put your mouth on the same thing every Ew, week. Ew, stop. Cares? <laughs> nah. <laughs> but yeah, that's our two uh, family meeting questions, y'all, again. If you have not seen last episode with Teacher Roby, go ahead and check that out, y'all. Shout out to her again for finally coming on the pod and giving us a good talk on pronouns and all that good yeah. shit and the whole aspect of being a teacher. Mm-hmm. Um. Other than that, yeah, that's it. Oh no, no. Also, listen to our listen to our podcast with uh, we still like each other. We just recently went on. Go ahead, listen to it. We talk about some fun stuff. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, get into it. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. <laughs> goose, goose, mother goose. Bye.